Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is your captain speaking. We are headed towards stormy waters, but until I get started on that one, I've got to do a little bit of housekeeping, promote this stream, and make sure that everybody's in and enjoying all of this awesome content. If you bear with me for just a few minutes, I'll make sure that everybody, including you, knows about this stream. Oh no, I'm muted. Yes, yes, yes. All right, sorry about that. Welcome back, everybody. I'm going to be showing you all a little bit about the latest and greatest tech to bless the Epic Storm version 14.0. I'm not gonna be showcasing it. It's already been displayed on, uh, on the YouTube channel. Bryant made an awesome video about it and um, it's gonna be something that's really fun. Uh, I am a little bit muted, I am no longer muted. I was explaining, by the way, that unfortunately, you got a little bit of a sneak peek and behind the scenes there, I had a monitor arrive uh, dead. So, only one monitor again today, but hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, next one's gonna work out just fine. So. 
we'll see what happens. And right now you're just gonna have to uh, experience this stream along with me. Everything like last week is gonna be pretty much polished for you guys with the exception of a couple of jumps here and there as I move windows. But it's all gonna be pretty, uh, pretty easy going in the games and everything like that. Got a little bit of background music thanks to Harris Heller. And we're going to be introducing the pile of cards that you see before us. Not much has changed in f as far as the 75 goes here. However, a few things have changed in Legacy. We talked last week about some of the bans, but we didn't really talk about it in terms of how it was affecting the Epic Storm, because I knew I was going to do this stream. So let's get started on that. Really, we're expecting, obviously, Delver's going to take a little bit of a hit. It's actually been showing up a little bit less um, in like showcase top eights and things like that. Kind of surprising. I was expecting it to bounce back a little bit more quickly than that, to be honest. Um, and then Initiative is floundering while it's trying to find its feet. You've got a lot of brew potential in the initiative space. You have, you know, Gruel and Boros um, initiative. You've got um, Bant initiative, uh, Stoneblade initiative with, uh, I think it's called the Trailblazer boots. It's an equipment that grants it the initiative when it enters the battlefield. Um, but not too much has changed in terms of what we're expecting as the Epic Storm. Right, Prismatic Ending is still a very powerful uh, sideboard removal sp uh, spell. Uh, it's probably one of the best removal spells ever printed, actually. And it slots in really nicely to our plan. Ave is still here. We're going to slime time all day long. Slime time live on stream, hopefully. Uh, the change here is going to be Massacre. And let me actually move this over here so that when I make it bigger, you can see it. Massacre, as we all know, is a free spell. When we control a swamp and our opponent controls a plains, we can cast it without paying its mana cost, and it's a board wipe. All creatures get minus two, minus two until end of turn. And this was a mainstay in the Epic Storm's sideboard and wish board, as a matter of fact. Um, but it was mostly for things like Death and Taxes, and Death and Taxes really didn't see any play in the Initiative era. It turns out there was a better mono-white deck to be playing, and that mono-white deck had a larger toughnesses, right? Archon of Emeria, three. White Plume Adventurer, three. Um, Season Dungeoneer was four. And then in addition to all of that, even if they had something that was lower toughness, they could often pump it up with a plus one, plus one counter after venturing into the dungeon or um, whatever season Dungeoneer's keyworded ability was, um, exploring and pump things up past Massacre's minus two, minus two effect. So that was not something that really came about during the initiative era. But now it's post-initiative, we're expecting death and taxes to be a little bit better and white to move back towards a Stoneforge Mystic and Thalia-centered game plan. Um, obviously, initiative is going to continue doing their things with the, the Ancient Tombs and the Chrome Moxen, but... Um, with uh, an expected influx of death and taxes, we brought in Massacre. The other nice thing is that um, it functions really nicely against four color control to remove Collector Oof. Now, it's happened actually a handful of times. I know that Bryant has done it a few times and I've done it once successfully and once unsuccessfully, but Massacre can hit a Collector Oof if our Tundra opponent is playing them. And that's really another added benefit. It's a really nice tool, and we're testing out if this is the meta for it. That's kind of where we are right now. And a lot of people have been asking about, 
Oh, when are you going back to green? When are you going back to green? Veil of Summer is awesome. Abrupt Decay is awesome. Um, Veil of Summer is really good. Abrupt Decay is incredible. I, w I won't doubt that. But Orm's Chant and Silence have been overperforming as of late. These uh, Silence effects are very similar to the Veil of Summer in terms of protection, but they also allow us to disrupt our opponent in ways that we weren't able to before. So Silence and Orm's Chant are no longer dead cards in non-blue, non-black matchups in game one. Certainly we can sideboard them out if they're not, hold up. I've got our, I've got a little, little fluff that wants to say hi. Um, he's gonna not have to say hi for very long. But um, these are not dead cards against initiative, against dark depths, which might, which might see a resurgence, by the way. You know, initiative kind of kept it down. Um, and Veil vale of Summer really isn't looking its best. Um, as I say that, I'm gonna transition transition into things that could have been getting better and that includes doomsday which is a thoughtseize duress matchup in which case veil of summer has some key importance there but silence and orms chant are also very important because we actually can again disrupt our opponent as opposed to just being reactive we can be proactive both on offense and in defense so that kind of sums up the general thoughts for 14-0. Pretty excited about testing out the Massacre. Again, the 60, the main deck, it's been feeling very strong recently. Uh, I think that I, I don't have any problems with the 60. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, the sideboard is where a lot of changes have been happening with the inclusion of Ave, Progenitor Ooze, and Massacre. Right, and we were testing out some other things as we were trying to figure out the counterbalance meta, but maybe with the uh, counterbalances going, maybe counterbalance will go away as Delver tries to solve for other open meta um, situations. We'll see, not sure. But I'm already queued up for a league, so let's get started. I'm gonna play a league match and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about our deck list that you can find um, in the link below. But if you like this content and you like supporting it, there's gonna be a lot of information on our website, theepicstorm.com, where you can find sideboard guides. If you're a Patreon member, you can get access to a lot of awesome articles that are written about these decks that we're progressing. So I'm going to start queuing up for a league and bemoan the fact that I only have one monitor as I switch over and tell you a little bit about our videos. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, early access to videos, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us like theepicsroom.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via theepicsroom.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. All right, so I clicked on the wrong support. That was telling you about our YouTube memberships, which is really awesome, actually. Um, I was a YouTube member for the, the team. Um, might still be, I'm not sure. But uh, you get awesome access to emotes that you can keep spamming on our live streams like today. And... Um, gets a lot of access to really cool stuff. You get access to all videos early, even at our base tier, which is something that we've introduced. Bryant has um, graciously started that. Um, so let's get to uh, comboing. I would like to play first. I won the die roll, which is really, really nice. And this hand is not bad. Um, obviously soft to wasteland. We've got some mana, and I'm thinking that this could potentially lead to a Galvanic Relay. One, two, three, four, five. I can Galvanic Relay on turn one. Um, 
which actually might be the reason to keep this hand, right? If I want to keep this hand, I have a goal in mind, and it might just be to Galvanic Relay on turn one. I am left with a Wishclaw Talisman and an Orm's Chant in hand, and then five new cards. I think I'm going to keep this. This Volcanic Island is noted as a potential weakness, but um, we'll see what we can do. Our opponent kept seven as well. One more mana and we could have emptied the Warrens, made a bunch of goblins, but that is not going to happen. I, oof, I floated over the Empty the Warrens as I was talking about it and almost clicked on it. That wouldn't have been very good. So our pile is Silence, Lion's Eye Diamond, Lotus Petal, Marsh Flats, Mox Opal. That was almost perfect. Obviously, we already have a Silence effect, but another one is not going to be bad. Um, and then a bunch of artifacts, and uh, we can make our land drop. So mm, that was pretty good. I don't know if I could have asked for a better one. Wooded Foothills and Savannah and Green Sun Zenith for a Dryad Arbor. Okay, so we are playing against some fair, potentially Dark Depths, which is not very fair, opponent. And our second turn was a Plateau. Well, I'll leave that there. get a scrubland. So I doubt that I'm going to need this silence, which means that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana, which is unfortunately not enough to wish claw into an ad nauseum that requires eight mana um, all in one go. So what I actually can do is deploy this whole spiel of hand and then orms chant them in their upkeep silence walk them and then ad nauseum in my upkeep because I don't want to draw the ad nauseum right that would be that would be pretty bad actually it wouldn't be that bad I have a plateau maybe I'll maybe I'll take a draw step okay so upkeep chant them. This is essentially just a time walk at this stage, which is always nice. And we can potentially see if they wasteland us, then I will be ad nauseuming in our upkeep. Uh, they can still do that under an orange chant. Planes is not going to happen. Ooh, that's a nice planes. No attack, they have a three mana up, could be an endurance. Um, I'll play my land, that seems fine. Tap the Mox Opal, because that's gonna go away. Or Metalcraft is gonna go away, it's not gonna go away. And then I'll leave the Scrubland and the Lotus Petal. Hmm, what are we doing? I'm not sure. Is this channeling beside you? I don't know. Arms Chant, Chrome Mox, Brainstorm, Dark Ritual, Rite of Flame, Scalding Tarn, Another Land, Mishra's Bobble, Relay, Lion's Eye Diamond, Brainstorm, More Mana, More Mana, More Mana, Burning Wish. I think that that will do. We can flip until we hit six. And that's a Wish Claw Talisman. It takes us down to five. I'll stop there. So we can just 
play out a bunch of stuff. This Galvanic Relay imprints very nicely under a Chrome Mox. And we actually have two Rite of Flames in our graveyard, so assuming that this isn't an Endurance, which it looks like it is. Okay. That's fine. They can Endurance. It's not going to matter. However, I was really looking forward to getting the whole kit and caboodle when it came to all of all four Rite of Flames. That's too bad. But um, I can just chant them really quick just to make sure nothing's going to happen. Not that anything would happen, but I'll play out everything I can now. And Lethal Tendrils of Agony. Look at that. Okay, turn three. Uh, against what I assume is going to be some kind of Naya Depths. The Endure... I mean, it could just be uh, Maverick, right? But we really haven't seen quite enough to really tell. Um, so this Massacre could be really nice. Uh, it's going to live in the sideboard. Um, and the Galvanic Relays and the Orange Chants aren't necessarily at their best. So I'll, can, I'll have these out. I'll leave one in for a potential Mind Break Trap or something like that. Um, and then I'll bring in three Prismatic Endings and three Thought Seizes. Our biggest problem is going to be Collector Oof and or potentially Athalia and Prismatic Endings and Thought Seizes function on both directions. Thought Seize preemptively and Prismatic Ending uh, reactively. Um, this also Thought Seizes work against Mind Break Trap. So pretty easy six and six. We'll leave a Prismatic Ending as a Burning Wish target, which may not be necessary Right, this, uh, the next thing is Orm's Chant and Prismatic Ending. I have put them in as such. Um, I could swap these very easily. Um, Orm's Chant can go out and all four Prismatic Endings can come in, especially since we have the Massacre and the Pulverize to get rid of problematic permanence. Um, in the sideboard is Wish Targets. We don't necessarily need the Wish Target here in Prismatic Ending, but... I think that that's just going to be fine. Um, hey, Dominic and Michael hey, and Nick. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Simeon Spirit Guide fail. Yeah, that'll do it. So I'm going to submit this. And this is a turn one ad nauseum. Uh, I'm going to keep this one. Hey, Colin. Yes, welcome to Team Tess. Uh, T-E-S. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to keep this turn one ad nauseum. They have a Savannah. This could... Oh, it's... Okay. The uh, I didn't want to speak it into existence. Um... I, yeah, Brian, I didn't want to speak it into existence. They they did not have... Oh, well, we were going to draw an answer to it, but that's fine. Okay. Now... Hmm, I did missequence that. Um, they could have Force of Vigor, and I should have left my Lion's Eye Diamonds until later. Um, and yes, I, I am going to be mindful of the trap. Mm, this hand can't really be mindful of the trap, actually. So we are going to go all in. These pauses, hmm. Make me wonder. Okay. I have a friend who wants to sit on my lap. And there's a force of vigor. Okay.
So let's just spin the wheel. We can spin the wheel or um, do nothing and pass, which doesn't seem great. So let's spin the wheel. Relay Michael is no longer in our main deck. We've sideboarded them out. Um, I am trying to get my cat to like settle down and sit in my lap, but instead we're tickling my chin. Okay, this is not bad. Um, not the greatest. Obviously, uh, Thoughtseize is gonna happen. And I'll get an underground C for the potential of drawing into a brainstorm. Hmm. Okay. Green Sun Zenith is probably going to be my take. Um, so they obviously have Wish Claw Talisman into Collector Oof right now. Um, that would spend all of their mana this turn, this following turn, unless I chant them, in which case I have a draw. And if I do that, I don't want them... Hmm. I don't know. I guess it's still the Green Sun Zenith. I do think I need to chant them. Um, see what the top of the deck brings us. This does make me lose Metalcraft, which is not ideal. Um, but it is what I what I can do. Wow. Did I just not see the wasteland? I just didn't see the wasteland. Oh, activate claw, then go. Yeah. Yeah, take the green sun zenith, and uh, yeah, okay. You know what, Bryant? That is reasonable. That's why I, that's why I have coffee now. Okay, they're not. Um, activating the claw. Or do they just draw it naturally? No. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll sign up for tutoring sessions some point. Okay. Let's see what happens. What my opponent wants to do. Another wasteland. That's kind of rough. So we know two of their three cards in hand. We know one of the two cards in hand. They are just allowing us to keep playing. Obviously this knight is very large. And we're not drawing very well. But we'll have to see what happens.
There it goes. Tutoring for a land, a wasteland. We're just on the wasteland me out game. Okay. And this is the oof. Is this not the oof? Okay. You didn't need to untap you. It's just one green source, but it's going to hurt either way. Hey, Grant. Yeah, absolutely. Incoming oof. Uh, big oof. Oh, wow. Opponent had it all. Okay. I can concede. Go to game three. Um, okay, so we've seen Outland Liberator and Collector Oof and all of those things. Orm's Chant actually ended up looking decent. If I didn't play it incorrectly, it would have been actually quite nice. Um, yeah, Wasteland's a pretty powerful strategy, um, especially when I have five mana producing lands. Uh, let's see. Do I want to bring in the other ending and just take out the Orm's Chant? I think I do. We're going to try this one out. Uh, this is another alternative sideboarding plan. Um, obviously, we've seen that they have a lot of permanents that I want to deal with. Hmm. So I have Mishra's Bobble to function as an additional draw Thoughtseize as disruption for their hate. And I'm going to keep this one. We've also seen Force of Vigor, so I'm not going to play out all of my things. Um, my opponent has started the game with seven cards, by the way. We'll get a Badlands. I have that right of Flame. And our opponent has shown us Deafening Silence, Birds of Paradise, Endurance, and Night of the Reliquary. There is a Wasteland. So let's get this Deafening Silence out. Mishra's Bobble. You know, I guess I could have bobbled them first. Uh, Windswept Heath, though. I should have bobbled them first uh, to gain more information. They're just going to go on the Wasteland Strat. That is going to work for now. Prismatic Ending. Not bad. So... Okay, so we know all six of their cards in hand. Um, oh, Nardolphin. Hello. How's it going? Welcome back to chat. Um, okay, so Desolation is a fun card. Oh. Desolation. Yeah, land destruction for sure. Um, I could not seize them, but they don't have cards that I would like to turn off. I could get this Birds of Paradise and slow them down, but I can just Prismatic Ending the Bird. I actually think that I'm going to pass. They play a windswept heath and probably the birds. Okay. Let's uh, bolt the bird, as it were. We're gonna end that bird. I 
Uh, my opponent is on Maverick, it looks like, actually. Maverick or Depths, green-white Depths. Unsure of the variant, but... Outland Liberator is pretty good. Okay, so this is not bad either. So this is one, two, three, four mana, five, six, seven. And as we've discussed, seven mana isn't enough to add nauseum. And with this Outland Liberator, um, they're gonna be able to destroy anything that they want. We're going to echo here. And we can do so with this Lotus Petal in play. Is there, I really hope that their unknown in hand is not Mindbreak Trap. Let's get the Echo of Eons. Now we do know that they have an Endurance, which is also something that they could be holding up, but, um, okay. So it was not Mindbreak Trap. That's good to know. This hand. So I think I'm priced into the Brainstorm. Um, we can put back a brainstorm and a burning wish. Um, this gives us some outs to draw more mana for a peer, more mana for an ad nauseum. Uh, we'll have to find out. We have a prismatic ending for a collector oof if we draw another land. And we do not know our opponent's cards now. Oh, they have a Thalia. Okay. I need an additional land, but I kind of want to guarantee a white source right now. So let's grab the plateau. I did just wheel them into a bunch of cards. So I'm, I can't say that I'm surprised. Uh, they have the Outland Liberator, but I didn't want it um, transforming. So I wanted to play the Lotus Petal. Maybe that's just wrong. Uh, green Sun Zenith. For one, a prismatic ending. What are we doing here? Prismatic ending. Okay. Well, I do want that in my graveyard, so I'll sacrifice that. Cast it with two colors. Oh, yeah, because the Thalia. Duh. Never mind. All right, we are bleeding out. Oh, that is probably gonna seal the deal. Uh, yeah, I can't 
cannot beat that. Well, we had a couple of one misplay with the arms chant. I could have actually chanted them in response to the Wish Claw Talisman activation for Collector Oof um, instead of in their upkeep. And that was a pretty big misplay on my part because I would have gotten a tutor back um, and they wouldn't have been able to actually play the arms or the, the, the Collector Oof. And then I had a couple of mediocre Echo Vions. Uh, obviously, I didn't have any mana floating. I had land drops available, but my Echoes didn't actually work out quite as well as I would have hoped. Um, okay, so I ran an ad beforehand to tell you about the YouTube site, which I accidentally did. Let me actually tell you about all the articles that you can read and access our sideboard guide. I have a list of all of our videos that we publish on the Epic Storm. Uh, theepicstorm.com is where all of this is done. Oh, well, I will uh, run that as soon as we're done with this opponent, which, I mean, this is a turn one ad nauseum. I will keep this. Um, this is moderately more protect, um, resistant to Force of Vigor, uh, not only because it's game one, but I can also play around Force of Vigor significantly better. Uh, Spirit Squad. Yeah, absolutely. This hand is gas. So, memories of the time. Ooh, wow. Uh, swamp, and they didn't end up trying to... Oh, oh, okay. Sure. Just draw the ad nauseum. Which is fantastic, because this swamp into a uh, pass makes me think dark ritual into an opposition agent and oh boy that wouldn't have felt very good um let's see uh deck edge yeah it's pretty awesome so let's see about we can bait out the opposition agent here or we can just we can just do the thing Okay, so I'm gonna hold control, ad nauseum, floating, black. Lotus Petal, Burning Wish, Lion's Eye Diamond, already off to a great start. Chromox, Chant, Lotus Petal, this is almost lethal already. This is lethal already. Um, we're gonna keep flipping and we'll stop there. Uh, oh yeah, deck edge, absolutely. I can't see some of those schematics. Uh, one monitor again, unfortunately, but yeah, absolutely. Like the video if you guys are if you guys are enjoying this. If y'all are, are having fun, then let me know. And that was a nice turn one kill, so you better be having fun. That was a lot of fun for me. Maybe not so much for our opponent, but again, that's fine. Okay, against. Okay, so we've saw swamp pass not very much information to go off of is this a leyline helm mono black control um is this rogues which has been picking up in popularity after a couple of content creators started playing things um let's see about our sideboarding I don't think that Orem's Chant is going to be necessary, and Galvanic Relay, potentially not either. These are all cards that I have considerations to remove. Thoughtseize is probably not that bad. And then Prismatic Endings. Do I want... I think I want at least one chant in. This is going to be very similar boarding. Uh, the game plan is going to be a little bit different. Um, they're not going to have Collector Oof. They're going to have other problematic permanents like potentially Dothy Voidwalker or Opposition Agent. Um, I don't think that they're going to have as many, which is why I don't want to bring in all four prismatic endings. But I think that this sideboard plan works out really nicely anyway. So we're going to submit. Um, Wish we had cracked the fetch. Yeah, I guess I could have gained some information for sure. Uh, SW, um, 
I could have wished for Thoughtseize, um, but our opponent actually conceded before we were we were given the opportunity, right? No, I put Thoughtseize. I put Tendrils on the stack. Did it? It doesn't matter. Um, this this is pretty close. Our opponent mulligans to six. Um, this is a little awkward. Ad nauseum and lion's eye diamond in the same hand. Usually it's not bad, right? You saw that we were able to lion's eye diamond. Um, okay, so we're one mana away. We're going to keep this. We're going to keep this. Oh, whoops. Yeah, I do need to update my record. Thank you, Michael. Oh, and one in the league against uh, what I think is Maverick. We can just safely call that Maverick. Okay, our opponent has mulligan to five. Yeah, like the discard is going to be a problem. Um, but with our hand, we're going to just hope that that doesn't happen. Scrubland, is this dead guy ale? Nope. Oh, wow, wait a second. That's a Cabal Therapy. They pitched a Cabal Therapy to grief. Um, yeah, Spirit Squad, absolutely. So we have, I didn't mention that, but because we were one man away from just hard casting the ad nauseum, um, but we also could have, um, oh wow, it is scam. Yes, called it Spirit Squad. Um, that's pretty rough. All right, I'll just um, yield through this turn. I wonder if they take the Brainstorm or, yeah, okay. Or the Lion's Eye Diamond. Okay, Bloodstained was good. Mishra's Bobble will allow us to kind of protect our hand from discard in a way, right? It's just a, a card that's in my hand that's on the battlefield. I can draw it later. Some of the perks of a slow cantrip. I'm going to use it to scry rather than to gain information about my opponent with two cards in their hand. Um, so we are getting scammed. I and a thought sees. Wow, look at that. Okay, Mishra's Bobble, looking at a Burning Wish. I would like that. That sounds pretty good to me. And a Volcanic Island. Okay, so we can Echo here. Our opponent has one card in hand. Um, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're really not close to peer into the abyss. We would need to wait a few turns for that to happen. And with the really high rate of discard that they have, they seemingly have, um, is it worth waiting or do we jam an echo, which has not been very kind to us in this league so far? Should I jam the echo or should I wait and peer? What do you guys think? What do y'all think? Um, let me know. Type it out in chat while you're down there. Give this video a thumbs up if you're enjoying it. You're hanging out here, spending your evening Thursday. Um, okay, we've got a jam and a wait. Uh, relay with them on one card. Uh, relay is also a possibility. A relay for three. Um, I'm getting a lot of echoes. I think that... Well, uh, okay, so we're getting mixed results, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna echo. We're gonna do this. I know that we're not under the gun, Grant, um, but we're gonna have some fun. We can absolutely uh, 
wait, but we're going to make this card pay off. And it kind of did. Look at that. So we at the very least have another echo available to us. That's really nice. It's very, very kind. But we're also going to get a brainstorm in here. Turn some. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Okay. Turn some of those lands into actual cards. We can actually add Nas. We can turn this this echo into an add Nas. Uh, actually, I want to I want to play the lines I diamond out first. Um, this is not enough to be lethal tendrils for what it's wo worth. Um, we need one extra mana um, because this activation. So we have six available mana, which is enough to ad nauseum, not enough to find Burning Wish into a Tendrils. If we had a main deck Tendrils, Alex McKinley is turning over in his bed somewhere. But, um, so ad nauseum from 16 with Echo out of the deck seems pretty good to me. I could just have Echoed as well. Um, I think that Adnaz would be slightly more guaranteed. Right of Flame, Lotus Petal, more mana, artifacts, more mana, Lion's Eye Diamond. We can go all the way down to three, which we will, and I think that that should do it. And this should be more than enough mana, plenty of storm. We can even thought seize them on the way out. Uh, is this all four? This is all four Rite of Flames. Look at that. Fantastic. Our deck heard us talking about the desire to do that last game, and they really pulled it off. Okay, in before Grape Shot. Cool. Not Grape Shot, Gut Shot. Excuse me. Would like a Grape Shot right now. You know, we don't need, we don't need to crack Lion's Eye Diamond. We have this in the bag. And we can re-roll with a tender, uh, an Echo of Eons in the graveyard. Look at that. Okay. Turn one, ad nauseum in game one. Game two, eh, wasn't very good. Um, and then, wait, no. This was game two. Yeah, we got it in two. Heck yeah. That was really nice against a scam opponent that discarded us three times before we really got going. Um, that was pretty cool. All right. Uh, drew and discarded the main echo. Yeah. Um, Folly a scam. Kind of scary. It would be potentially a bad matchup. So that's two Thalia matchups, a win and a loss. Uh, so Maverick and then, I don't know, just white, black scam. Pretty interesting. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about how you can support us on the website, which this is the third time running. I clicked the wrong ad the first time. We paired into our match really early the second time. So I will finally tell you about an awesome Patreon that you can join, get access to articles early. You get some pretty cool perks, some store um, discount codes and things like that. You could buy some merch from us. But um, let me tell you, tell you about our Patreon. Want early access to articles at theepicstorm.com? Become a member of our Patreon to get articles seven days early, on top of other sweet benefits, and help us pay our website team. You can sign up at patreon.com slash theepicstorm. We really packed all of those perks in uh, really nicely for all of our tiers. You get some really cool stuff with that. Um, 
Patreon. Uh, okay, so we've got our round three. It's really quickly, we are one and one. Now, um, let's see. This hand could use some work. Um, Harry, one, two, three, two. Sounds really familiar. I've played them recently. I'm not going to worry about looking them up. Um, but I think I'm going to keep this on the back of Brainstorm. Um, this Mox Opal and a third land are not really what I'm looking for, uh, but they can be very easily put back with the Brainstorm. This is a mediocre keep, um, but I'm going to keep it anyway. Grant, yes, you're right. It is a good hand against Fair Blue. I have protection, I have mana, and I have a way to find what I need, and I can make my land drops. So it's just fine. Um, Dark Maverick, yeah. We played um, the Jedi Maverick and the Sith Maverick today. I wonder if they're a Stoneforge Mystic deck too. I don't know. Not that our Maverick opponent was. They've been off Stoneforge Mystic for a long time. But um, I wonder if that, that scam deck was on Stoneforge Mystic. Oh, this is, this is Dark Maverick? Oh, okay. Well... I uh, I like this hand against Wasteland opponent. Also, what do you think about my mug? A friend of mine got it for Christmas for me, and it's got some awesome artwork if you guys recognize who uh the artist is on this really congratulations nobody uh, should miss that one um but i i really like it. it's my favorite mug okay we are playing against some kind of saga deck um mox diamond this could be uh lands doesn't usually play dryad arbor so some kind of Green Sun Zenith Saga deck is what I think that we can assume from Dryad Arbor Haywire Might, Mox Diamond. Drawing the Lion's Eye Diamond was really nice. Uh, so we are going to fight the diamonds. Uh, yeah, Spirit Squad, I think that you're pretty spot on. We're going to have to figure out what's going on for sure. Um, we have to make sure to play around this Haywire Might. It's actually reasonably good against us if we don't sequence things correctly. Okay, we've got Obs on Colors here. Scrubland, this could be Dark Maverick-ish. Uh, Dark Maverick adjacent things. Oh, nope, never mind. We got four colors. Is this four color loam? Ooh. Okay. There's a wasteland. Burning Wish. That's pretty good. Uh, I do think that I'm going to brainstorm. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um. <clears throat> Let's see. Yeah, I think I'm gonna brainstorm. We'll do this off of an underground sea. And put back a couple of lands that are not necessary. And we can actually chant walk our opponent. They can still activate Grist and they can still activate Haywire Might if they want to, I guess. I don't know why they would. Um, but they won't be able to say life from the loam back that wasteland and get us so we're all rolled up for a potential peer into the abyss depending on what we draw one two three four five six seven eight we need a plus one or an, uh, something to turn a mox opal on That'll do it. 
that's going to be appear into the abyss and we can actually do so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten we can also do that with a chant um no we i don't want to do that because they have the haywire might and we've just discussed that i need to be able to play around the haywire might so i'm going to actually play out mox opal let's fetch first actually uh, yeah, Grant, you are spot on. Um, so let's play out the Mox Opal first. And then Dark Ritual. A Lotus Petal. Daniel, hello. Welcome. Hello from Brazil. I actually was talking to a Brazilian player on uh, Moto recently. Okay, so they are destroying the Mox Opal. That's fine. Now I can... Burning Wish for a Peer into the Abyss. And let's make green. Why not? Dispiss. And we've got it all rolled up, it looks like. Calvanic Relay. Nicely exiling underneath Chrome Mox. Can make a Mox Opal. Tap for black. Make another Mox Opal. Uh, I guess I can silence them just in case. Um, I don't know what they would have at this point, but it is free to do. 10 drills of agony. Turn three, peer into the abyss. Love it. Uh, fantastic. Okay, my cat is hanging out just off to the side here. Okay, so we're going to go for prismatic endings and thought seizes. We have the massacre that could be really nice. We have, um, this is the, the third massacre matchup, actually, this entire league. We've had, we've had opportunities for everything. Oh, nope, nope. Okay. Hopefully my cat decides to sit down this time but it's kind of like hurting cats, actually. <laughs> um, not the easiest thing to do. Okay, so Prismatic Endings in, Thought Seizes in, Galvanic Relays in Silence, Orm's Chance out. Oh, he's settling down. This is excellent. Um, okay, and we've kept, uh, we've opened up a pretty good hand. Obviously, it does not have actual action and any of our sideboard cards. Um, click baited by the one of, but it's actually it's actually more than that because it's our burning wish target, right? And we can we can play one of and see it quite a lot actually. Okay, so this obviously has a lot of mana, but if they have something like a Deafening Silence, they have on seven, hmm, I don't know. Um, I think I'm gonna keep this. This is just fine. Obviously not having a Prismatic Ending for a Deafening Silence or a Thoughtseize for a Thalia. Ooh, they might not give me the opportunity to Thoughtseize a Thalia if they're playing it on turn one. You know, I actually wouldn't mind, uh, ooh, well, I shouldn't say that. Okay, well, that's fine. It's not the greatest, but my hand actually is not that awful against Collector Oof at the moment. Now, it's gotten worse, but that's fine. 
Uh, Daniel, uh, my favorite storm deck is the Epic Storm. It's uh, pretty straightforward, um, but I like a lot of storm decks. I, I haven't played the Rot Priest storm deck in Modern yet, and it's been a long time since Dark Petition Storm was good in Vintage, but those are all really fun decks. Ad Nauseam Tendrils is kind of like a classic storm deck. It's like a, you know, pretty solid. I, it, I prefer, obviously, the Epic Storm why I'm producing content and writing web, web articles and things like that for them. Uh, I just like the complexity of the Epic Storm compared to Ad Nauseam Tendrils. Tendrils in Modern Win. That would be fun. Okay. Taking two. And that's it. Okay. Wow, look at that. I don't actually want to add nauseum here. Um, which is wild, right? But I don't have anything to do. Um, obviously, I can make five mana with Rite of Flame and Dark Ritual um, off of my two lands, but then I don't have anywhere to go. My artifacts are turned off with this Collector Oof. So what I think that I want to do is end step brainstorm and at the very least i'll be able to add nauseam with a land draw remaining so <clears throat> i can do that at the end of my opponent's turn gain as much information as possible um and we'll see where things go they didn't do anything on two mana this three mana oh dark confidant okay this really is like a four color loam deck okay another dark ritual is really nice and i can put back a lotus petal and a mox opal and keep all of the zeros in my deck where i want to reveal them off of ad nauseum and all of the one drops in my hand where i don't want to reveal them Okay, so let's get a plateau. Ooh. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. So we're going to have a lot of mana floating with this, and we're not going to say names of cards that could be problematic. Oh, this is an F6. Two mana floating of each color. Wish Gala Talisman, Lion's Eye Diamond, Volcanic Island. So what I'm looking to reveal, Burning Wish is good, is a white source off of a land. Scalding Tarn will do that. And a Prismatic Ending. Echo of Eons is not going to be very helpful. Um, I don't have any threes. Dark Ritual. Okay, so that will do it. That will make enough mana... Uh, that's plus two. I have six, seven mana. I am good to go. I have enough mana. I can win through this collector oof without having to do a single thing about it. That feels good. So, Burning Wish. Tendrils of Agony be in agony my opponent thank you very much <laughs> right was very nice spirit squad i will agree turn three adnaz threw a collector oof look at that look at that little guy didn't do anything feels pretty good we are going to increment our wins by one now we are two and one into the league against um three Thalia opponents and haven't been able to cast Massacre once. Hmm. Well, that's pretty fun. I like that. Let me uh, tell you, so our, our team came up with the idea of playing Massacre and some of our sideboarding uh, decisions, and we based that on expectations of the meta 
post banning of White Plume Adventurer and Expressive Iteration. Um, these thoughts were shared amongst a lot of the site writers or the team members and then shared in podcasts as well. Um, Eternal Glory, uh, Bryant Cook is a host, co-host of Eternal Glory with Phil Gallagher and Brian Koval. And they actually went over what the larger metagame was going to look like according to their speculations. You can listen to their most recent episode. I think it's a week old, uh, which means they'll have another one next Thursday. I think they release on Thursdays, which will talk about something new. Let me give you a little bit of an introduction into the podcast. You can get a lot of awesome information from a combo player, a prison fair non-blue player, and then a control or fair blue player. Uh, really, really cool information there. Awesome resource if you're trying to learn about current legacy and want to hear the thoughts of people that are actually on the ground playing the format. So let me swap over really quick to uh, podcast information. The best legacy podcast? That would be Eternal Glory featuring myself, Bryant Cook, alongside Brian Koval and Phil Gallagher. We're available on all major podcast platforms and YouTube. Alrighty. So there we go. Um, a little bit of an information podcast. Awesome episodes. Um, really informative. And let's see what chat's got to say. Should have nosed on their end step. Uh, Nick, I could have definitely done that. I wanted to nose then so that my opponent couldn't discard me, for example. Um, or deploy another hate piece like a deafening silence that I would also have to deal with. Um, I wanted to just do away with any top deck potential problems, uh, untapping into an additional source of mana or two would have been nice. It would have guaranteed the white source, but I don't think that that was necessary. Turns out we actually didn't find a prismatic ending at all, but sorry, my cat's biting and scratching me. Uh, okay. My hand is a little dirtily. Um, and I think I'm going to keep it. We've got actual action, ways to find cards, and Lotus Petal and Chrome Mox feed into that relay on as early as turn two. We'll see. I'm going to keep this. We're on the draw. Uh, what's the origin of my MTGO name? Uh, Kill him Deader. Yeah, so... Do you know the uh, look at me on the captain now meme? Um, someone, when I was in Kansas City going to school there, kind of said, oh, I'm the captain because I said something similar. Um, and a lot of people started referencing the meme around me. Um, and my last name starts with a K and it was really easy to what are we doing Sh shoot wow uh gross okay so i could concede right now but i don't want to Um, because I actually have a Pulverize in my sideboard and Burning Wishes that I can draw to. I could... Oh, man. Uh, is it worth gaining more information? Okay, so for what it's worth, this is probably the green-red Gruel Minsk and Boo uh, Stompy deck right has some initiative cards like caves of chaos adventurer um it's got minsk and boo it's probably got some goblin rabble masters things like that um i i think that we can make a land drop and pass and if they play another follow-up threat um then i'm good to go 
I can concede. But there's still some game left here. I have dedicated direction here for outs to winning. So even actually um, as a follow-up, I can wish claw into an ad nauseum. Unlicensed terse. Don't care about that. Not until you can start crewing it. Hmm. Yeah, kill them deader. There's a possibility that they know what I'm on if I scoop. They also can just Google my name. Um, my username is uh, full of just finishes with the epic storm. So kind of just the life you live. I do need to branch out and get finishes with other things to make people question what I'm on. I just haven't done that. All right. Um, Under Mountain Adventurer. This is four mana. 3-4 Vigilance, ETBs take the initiative, add 2 green, if, if completed a dungeon, add 6 instead. Alright, so if I draw exactly Burning Wish, I will not play out a plateau, for what it's worth. Um, and Delver, potentially interesting. Okay, I'm done. I'm not going to race that. Um, I could play Delver. I've played Delver at locals and things like that and had a lot of fun with it. Trinosphere. So this is something that people in the Eternal Glory podcast has talked about and uh, we've actually considered is that initiative is going to remain as a deck but go more prison forward. Things like Trinosphere, things like Blood Moon, things like Chalice of the Void and this is one of the iterations of initiative initiative iterations fun, um, that seeks to do that. Not one that I am particularly excited about coming up against. <clears throat> so, oh, I played um, Cephalid Breakfast last week on stream. I had a, I had a blast. Um, it was pretty fun. I would like to play first. I would not like to keep this. I would like to keep this. All right, we're going to echo on turn one and see what happens. Oh, Grant, they're just not even playing chalices. Okay, well, you know, if your deck is tailor built to play a three drop on turn one, why not play Trinosphere instead of a two drop Chalice of the Void with one counter on it, which doesn't hit as many decks? I guess that makes sense. Uh, not Goblins. Yeah, not Goblins. I have a, a friend of mine, a good friend of mine, that has the corner on the market when it comes to Goblins decks. Uh, I'm going to keep this. I'm going to bottom a Burning Wish. Actually, he's got a gorgeous, fully foil, all original printing um, goblins in Legacy. Go seventh edition goblin matrons, um, fully foil Mercadian mask with shodden ports, uh, FBB duels, not beta duels, but FBB duels. It is oh, incredible. And um, There are some really complicated lines for goblins. It makes me feel like uh, he's as much of a storm player as I am sometimes. Heck. 
go. And then we'll float. So we took out the Galvanic Relays. And because of that, we have Thought Seizes in the deck. Um, I'm actually... It's easier for me to imprint black cards under Chrome Mox than it is red cards under Chrome Mox. So I actually am going to be floating red here. I think that that makes the most sense to me. That's what the numbers suggest. So two red and one blue. Um, and we actually hit a right of flame. So that's also pretty good. So we have to brainstorm. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, have to brainstorm. Oh boy, okay. There we go. We're done. As long as my opponent doesn't interact with me anymore, this is a nice turn one echo win. Making up for all of the really rough um, echoes we've had previously. Burning Wish. And... Tendrils of Agony. Okay. And I got the Mistress Bobble in before they could concede. <laughs> I saw a once upon a time, but um, that's about it. So, Jason, I technically, I guess, have a Twitch account. Um, and the Epic Storm has a Twitch channel, but neither one of them are really active. We're gonna be live streaming on YouTube and not Twitch. Um, that's just kind of a better streaming service for us. And it works out really well for you as well because the VODs are, are actual YouTube videos afterwards and they're searchable. You can interact with them a lot more easily after the stream which actually is a significant number of views afterwards we've seen. So YouTube actually just works out quite a bit better. Um, the integration between the actual live streaming and then putting it on YouTube is seamless. It's really, really nice. Um, MT could have been more deterministic. I wasn't going to... Like, I thought about empty putting a bunch of goblins on the battlefield. Um, well, there's only 10, right? One, two, three, four, five. There's only 10 goblins. Um, I don't know if I, I liked just 10. I don't know if it would have worked out as well. Uh, yeah, I guess, I guess Three ball is late. You can't play an initiative creature against time. Yeah, okay. Maybe goblins would have been deterministic. I thought 10, and in my mind, 10 isn't good enough to race a Stoneforge Mystic and Batter Skull. And I don't know why I equated those things in my head. Uh, they're obviously not a Batter Skull matchup. You're obviously not playing Stoneforge Mystic. Um, but with those trainings, I just like, oh, 10 goblins, not enough. Gotta do 12. Um, oh, they could play Fury. I didn't think about that. I don't know if they would have kept in Fury, though. I don't know what these initiative decks are playing. They're in a real high state of flux right now. Um, Fury might be played. Fury might not be played. It's going to be really pilot dependent. <laughs> Tribe Wars, yeah, absolutely we're going to keep storming, for sure. Oh, this would be uh, semi-decent on the play, but on the draw, I don't think this is going to work. Uh, yikes. We are going down to five. Oh boy, this is not great. We are going to four. Our opponent is also going to four, for what it's worth. Eh. Okay, we are really looking for an Echo Lion's Eye Diamond Hand. I think oh, they've, they've gone to three as well. Man, we are just crushing it. 
Ugh, I really wish that this cast Thoughtseize. I don't think I can keep this. Um... I don't think I can keep this. I have to mulligan. Uh, I will keep this. Do I keep Lion's Eye Diamond Bloodstain Mire? Or do I keep Lion's Eye Diamond Wishclaw Talisman? Um, they're on green red initiative okay so I can keep a land and I can be drawing to brainstorm wish claw talisman burning wish and I have to find an additional mana source uh, or I can keep wish claw talisman and I need to find three mana sources Um, you don't think that you would keep Lion's Eye Diamond. That's kind of... So, so they're on three. I don't think that they're going to be a, something that... I, I don't think that thought seizing them is going to be reasonable. Um... I think that I'm going to be keeping land Lion's Eye Diamond. Wish Claw Talisman is really tempting. Um, but I think that drawing three mana sources... Um, man, we're so heavy on mana. Are we heavier on mana than we are on action? Probably. Um... Yeah, sure. We're going to keep a no lander on two. We're going to do it. We're going to do it, and it's going to work out. You ready for this to work out? It's totally fine. Everything's going to be fine. Uh, once upon a time. So they actually kept two and a random. Ancient Tomb is pretty good. And they didn't have anything to follow up. Okay, so we, we got our hand... I am playing this Lion's Eye Diamond out right now. Um, and actually, I was mistaken. We don't need to draw three mana. We just need to draw two and then be able to pass the turn and survive so that we can echo. Uh, um, so close. It's not not paying off. Which is, which is weird. Uh, yeah, the opponent kept uh, kept a three as well. So we were both mulliganing into the dirt. They turn one to me in game one with the Trinisphere. The game went on for a little while longer, but we were dead on turn one. Uh, and then I turn one to them in game two. And we're going to see what happens in game three, where we both mulligan to the dirt, into the dirt. Wow. We are so close to ad nauseum. I just need an initial, I just need one extra mana. Um, can't be a Rite of Flame. It can be... What are you... Oh, Trinosphere. Of course. Okay. Fine. Watch. We're going to draw the land. We're going to draw the land right now. Which is fine. Ooh. That's also fine. Um...
Just need to draw lands. That's okay. Well, when we add nauseum, if we add nauseum, we were on two. It was Wishclaw Talisman LED. Um, okay, so they've have they have five cards. Ugh. Now, obviously, I can echo. Um, not something that I really want to do. I think it's more... Ooh, no. They have drawn a colored source. Okay. They have... And they have both colored sources. They have a mountain, and they just found a forest. This is not looking great. There's the land. Okay, we need one more of those. They did, in fact, draw out just a hair earlier than we did. So we're gonna be taking seven now. Plus, if they have uh, the green initiative creature or a, they have another initiative creature, then we'll be taking five for the trap. Um, there's the forest. Collector Oof. What the heck? Um, that does it. I don't think that we can win now. That really hurt. Oh! There's the land. Uh, okay. All of y'all can put Sad Nas emotes in chat because... We were just one turn behind. We could Prismatic ending the Trinosphere and then Echo. Uh, and we just we just were one turn behind finding all of those lands. We were really close on a mulligan to two. Our opponent was on a mulligan to three and their three worked out really nicely. I wish that they had found like caves before they found the Trinosphere and just like never found that card. Uh, but, oh, that was, that was pretty brutal. Um, okay, so we are two and two, losing to uh, Trinosphere, which, mm, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely felt that one. But that's okay. We can rally and make this a positive league and earn our money back and a little chest that we can open up as a prize. Let me tell you uh, a little bit more about uh, some of the products that we offer. Um, let me tell you about some really cool stuff that we've got while we're waiting for our next opponent. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. So you can obviously find um, some really cool links down in the description below with the video, which is another thing that I can't do with Twitch, by the way. Um, and that'll take you to Card Hoarder or TCG Player. All of our Amazon affiliate links are really cool. You can actually check out what I'm working with as far as a setup goes for streaming and any little bit that we get kicked back when you visit one of those links and purchase something through that. It doesn't have to be the item that we actually linked. You could just click on it and buy something else, toilet paper for the month, whatever you want. Uh, we get a little bit of a kickback for every purchase, uh, which is really cool. If you're feeling generous use one of those links and while you're at it make sure to like uh the the video that you're watching the stream that you're enjoying tonight and we'll see what we're doing against game maker on the draw again 
Um, have we we won the first die roll? I don't think that we've won won a die roll since. Um, I'm gonna keep this hand. This is pretty good if we find another mana source. Um, this galvanic relay is looking pretty juicy. I'm gonna keep this. I guess this is one hand that I would keep on the draw and not on the play. So there's there's something to be said about losing the die roll every once in a while. And we're up against Prismatic Vista decks and Island Ponder. Oh, ninjas. Okay. Well, that is an aggressive start. Retrofitter Foundry has a lot of text on it, but it also makes Thopters into 4-4 constructs uh, just by tapping. So we are going to be getting a little bit aggressive from our opponent. Okay, land. Lotus Petal, that'll work too. And we're going to see if they counter that. Nope, okay, that's too bad. But let's relay for six here. Turn one, relay for six. Really actually works out nicely if you don't make a land drop. All of your hand is spells. Orange Chant is good. Another Orange Chant is less good. Lotus Petal is decent, Rite of Flame is decent. Mox Opal is okay. Chrome Mox, no action. These brainstorms are really gonna have to pay off. Um, we are going to bobble them in their upkeep. And they have an ingenious infiltrator. Okay. And we knew that they had a uh, ninja already because they didn't actually sack this um, ornithopter to retrofitter foundry. So they might have something like a Yuriko Tiger Shadow or another ingenious infiltrator. We'll have to see what gets ninjutsued in here. And it's the Ingenious Infiltrator. Okay. They get to draw a card. And replay the Ornithopter. I wonder if they had Moonsnare Hacker as their ninja and then they chose to play the Ingenious Infiltrator. I don't know. Dark Ritual is our draw for Bobble and a Dark Ritual as our draw for Turn. Uh, okay, so let's play out a Lotus Petal. This will turn on our um, Metal Craft. There we go. Wow, forgot the word. Uh, let's float a white here. Play the other Mox Opal. How about an Orm's Chant? And that resolved. Okay. So let's brainstorm. See what's happening. Hmm. Okay. So we can uh, put back silence and chrome mocks, I guess. Um, Play the volcanic island. Not a sh not a uh, shuffle effect. Not a fetch land. Let's do the brainstorm thing again. Okay, that's better. And this will allow us to add nauseum. That was a really good brainstorm. That last card that we could see was a wish claw talisman, and uh, like we were saying before. We need eight mana to add nauseum, and this Wish Claw Talisman takes two to cast. And one to activate, so that's three. And then the ad nauseum is eight. Well, it's five, and makes eight. And we're starting off real strong with the Echo of Eons. Way to go. Uh, at least it's out of the way. We don't have to worry about it. We can go all the way down to three. 
Mishra's Bobble, Galvanic Relay. Oh boy, we're hitting some heavy ones. Another Relay, Burning Wish. Uh oh. Okay. Um, I do not want to repeat this. I need this brainstorm. I need another really good brainstorm. Uh, I couldn't write before. I didn't have mana. Mox Opal. And unfortunately, I've already used Orm's Chant, and there's another one right here. Um, unless I am able to echo a Vions and find two white sources and the Orm's Chant, I am actually going to die next turn. So I have to find a route to victory now. And that doesn't do it. Uh, yeah, because I've already... I've already made my land drop, and um, I could relay, but they have one, two here, and then this retrofitter boundary makes this ornithopter giant, and I'm just going to bobble them for information, and we're going to be good for, to go. Okay, I have an island. And concede. Didn't get there. Alright, against... Ninjas. I'm gonna sack LED for red and cast. Oh. Well, I guess that's true. Hmm. Okay, so I missed uh, two mana there. Um, okay. Against ninjas. I want to bring in Ave and probably take out the Ad Nauseam. They're kind of in the middle between Delver and Control when it comes to aggressive, um, but I'm gonna bring in Ave and I'm gonna cut out the Ad Nauseam as, a, as an engine um, and see where things go. I don't want Thought Seizes. I don't care about Prismatic Endings. Uh, yeah, okay, we're gonna do that. And we're gonna crush these last two post-board games. Uh, this is pretty good, I'll keep this. We've got mana, we've got something to do with it, we've got a brainstorm to find protection or find other missing pieces that we might have, and we're gonna be making some land drops for a while. Changeling Outcast is their ninja. Okay. Um, I don't think I need to brainstorm now. Um, it's not gonna give me anything. It's not gonna give me access to anything. So I can do it at the end of their turn if I need to, or that'd probably be the end of their turn. Because these Dark Rituals, Burning Wish, and uh, Galvanic Relay is kind of looking where, looking like where I'm headed. All right. No Ninja. So, Null Rod. Well, that Chrome Mox is going. Hmm. Chromox and Mishra's Bobble can go, or I can put back the Chromox and the Scrubland 
And Mishra's Bobble, even though it's turned off, is going to serve as extra storm for my Galvanic Relay. That seems decent to me. And Lotus Petal will do the very same. See if this resolves first. Okay, because so we can... Uh, let's get a Badlands here. We can kind of bait, if you will, with this Burning Wish. And it's not really bait, because we can get a Pulverize. Um if it does end up resolving. And it did. Hmm. Do I want to get a Thoughtseize or a Prismatic Ending or a Pulverize? Prismatic Ending is actually probably the, the, the get. And then I can Galvanic Relay. Uh, Burning Wish, okay. Silence, that's good. Volcanic Island, Dark Ritual, Bloodstained Mire, Bloodstained Mire. I've seen better. I might actually be priced into getting uh, Scrubland, or Scrubland, um, yeah, Scrubland. Yeah, because that's our missing second white source. So I can silence and then prismatic ending. Uh, but the null rod's not really doing anything against us right now. Obviously, it's turning these two off, but we're not losing because of it. Not yet, anyway. Mox Opal. Okay. Well, we have a Galvanic Relay, so let's see about Silence. Does it resolve? Is this a hard cast Force of Negation? They have five cards in hand. Um, and they are considering things. And it resolves. Okay. So let's get the scrub land and destroy or exile this Null Rod, and we can Dark Ritual, Mox Opal gives us our two red that we need, and a Galvanic Relay. And I will want to make sure that I actually see what's being exiled Chromox, Wishclaw, Rite of Flame, Wishclaw, Burning Wish, Lion's Eye Diamond. Okay, so we have enough artifacts that I can use this Mishra's Bauble without fear of losing Metalcraft. Upkeep, they have a Yuriko, which they will probably end up using. I don't know, maybe not. Four mana. Five cards in hand. Something tells me that I'm going to be taking one plus some number. Hmm. How much that's going to be, we don't know. There's the Yuriko. And it reveals a Plague Engineer. So we took three. Okay, no goblins for us. Bobble gives us another relay. That's pretty good. 
and a chrome mox. Not super amazing, but I'll take it. So let's start off with a Rite of Flame. There's no more additional copies of that card. Uh, let's do a Lion's Eye Diamond. Spell Stutter Sprite. Okay. Hmm. So if I Wish Claw Talisman and then Chrome Mox, my Mox Opal is on. I don't have additional mana. Um, one, two, three, four. Now I could activate the Wish Claw Talisman to get a Rite of Flame. And that just eats it to another piece of counter magic. So I think, well, let's see how many Burning Wishes we actually have left. So that's one, two, three. We would have one Burning Wish left. Um, hmm. So we could try an Ave line. We can we can slime time live here on stream, but again we're eating it to another force of will. Our opponent has kept and kept a fairly anemic draw. We know that two of their cards in hand are a Plague Engineer and a. Uh, Changeling Outcast. They have three unknown cards in hand. What do you bet it's Force Blue card? I think that's pretty likely. They're not going to just be keeping it on Spell Starter Sprite alone. They had the Null Rod, but I think it's fairly likely that they've got a Force in hand now. Um, so I can just... Uh, man, I don't know if that'll, that'll be enough, but we're just going to relay. We're just going to relay. Say goodbye to Burning Wish number three. Ave, okay, Mox Opal, Orange Chant, Ride of Flame, Scalding Tarn, Relay, Brainstorm. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Uh, okay, this is looking pretty good. Six cards in hand. We know two of them. They're about to have seven cards in hand. And I took four. Oof, I'm at five. Okay, so Spell Stutter Sprite flies. Uh, Yuriko does not. Ingenious Infiltrator. Uh, and Plague Engineer. And then the... Um, Changeling Outcast. So I know half of their hand. Unfortunately, Changeling Outcast is unblockable. So this Ave is actually not looking super great now. Um, <clears throat> Cause they can attack with a Sprite and the Ingenious Infiltrator or the, the Changeling Outcast and then Ninjutsu in the Ingenious Infiltrator and then get two triggers um, plus any other creatures they might have. I don't know. A brainstorm could be potentially really helpful. Chant is nice. Um, I would have preferred that in hand so that I could upkeep chant them potentially um, and prevent any combat damage whatsoever. 
Ave and then upkeep chanting them is uh, is nice. Would be nice. Our silence is still in there, so I could potentially, I don't know, in some fairy tale land, silence in their upkeep so that an additional Orm's chant resolves. But this brainstorm would have to be very good in that case. Um, as it stands, they're going to present lethal. So I have to win next turn or Orms chant them. Uh, and they're getting rid of Rite of Flames. That's not, that's not a bad call. Uh, it turns off the one that I had in exile from making additional mana. So that's not bad. Um, so they have two cards that I don't know about in hand. I'm surprised they didn't upkeep that, but you know, whatever. Uh, okay. So Scalding Tarn, I have a volcanic island that is in the deck still. So I can play out this Scalding Tarn. And I'll brainstorm. Spell Starter Sprite, okay. So they could still have force blue card. And we're gonna see if they do. They do not. Uh, my opponent is chanted. Okay, so let's try Another brainstorm. Oh, hold up. Let's see. Um, exile. Oh, it is. It is an exile. Oh, you called it. Absolutely. I should have uh, paid more attention. That's all right. That land is not going to do anything. Our shuffle is the wishclaw talisman, I suppose. Um. Okay. So we have one, two, three. So I can put back, let's see, one, two, Mox Opal is three, Rite of Flame is four, Dark Ritual is five, six. That is not enough to Wish Claw into our final Burning Wish into Lethal. So I think I have to Echo. And our opponent has graciously not screwed us over um, by surgicaling Echo, or Lion's Eye Diamond, although I guess if they did that, then the Rite of Flame would be there and I would have lethal anyway, so ignore me. Leave the Mox Opal there and leave the Scrubland. Uh, yeah, our opponent is playing the one deck that is competitively viable outside of Popper where you can play Spell Stutter Sprite. Okay. Hmm. Start off with a brainstorm. It's not looking great. Not looking great at all. Is that it? Um, no, not necessarily. So I can still bobble myself. Um, and potentially draw an Orm's Chant to beat my opponent. So I have White Source, White Source. Um, and I can follow it up with a Galvanic Relay that will 
be lethal. Is that true? Yeah. So let's see. I can sack this lion's eye diamond. Oh, well, actually, if that's the case, I don't need the galvanic relay. I need Ave, because Ave will be lethal. And then I'm going to Mishra's Bobble myself, because I can use my Scalding Tarn to fetch in between. And we're drawing specifically to Orm's Chant, and I have Lotus Petal, Mox Opal. I did just wheel my opponent into seven. So let's see. Chrome Mox is not it, so we're gonna shuffle. Okay, and Mishra's Bobble, look, Brainstorm is not it. However, oh, they have a claw, they can just get it. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, so this is not gonna work. Wasn't gonna work anyway. Oh well. Our opponent can do all of the things that they want to do, and Yuriko uh, is guaranteed to kill because they have a brainstorm. Or oh yeah, they just they just deal the four right there. Okay. Oh well. So that was a little unfortunate. Uh, we had an echo that didn't really work out very well. And then we came up against Thalia, 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 Trinisphere, as far as matchups go. <clears throat> and went even on those, right? We, uh, we lost one Thalia, beat a Thalia, beat a Thalia, lost to the Trinisphere, and then we lost to Ninjas. Um, not the greatest showing. Uh, we had three matchups where Massacre was going to be potentially really good. Uh, we just never actually were able to deploy it. So not Massacre's fault necessarily. Maybe it's a sign of the times with that, that fourth initiative matchup that Massacre is not what we want. And we were wrong in our initial assumptions that Death and Taxes was going to be better. But we still saw Thalia's around. We saw Collector Oofs against uh, the Maverick player where Massacre would have been really good. So I think that we've made a case where Massacre is definitely needing to be in consideration, which is where we have it, right? 14.0 is the latest and greatest for the Epic Storm. Um, yeah, SW, they have a claw for force. Yeah, Goffman for sure uh, pointed that out and... It wasn't going to work out. I, I forgot that I had to find the LED somehow and gave them the claw. But um, it was it was an interesting time. We, we saw some lines and never really had a cohesive plan to pull it all together. But we had the tools to do so. Um, just not quite everything that we needed. Uh, we were missing on a couple of white sources. I could have... If we had an additional white source, then I could have silenced in their upkeep instead of making Ave. Um, silencing them and then Orm's chanting, drawing to an Orm's chant, and they would have had to have two pieces of counter magic, even with the Wishclaw Talisman. Yeah, we had some opportunities there, um, but that's all right. A uh, bunch of numbers, Rom. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad that you enjoyed it. Uh, thanks for stopping by. That was actually our last game of the league. Um, absolutely crushed us. So that's totally fine. We appreciate you stopping in and saying hi before the end of the stream. Um, you had so much interaction. I'm not going to lie. I wheeled you into a bunch of good stuff, and there was no way that I was going to beat it. The The goal was to Orem's chant. Uh, in your upkeep, draw it with Mishra's Bobble or wheel into it. But we really, we didn't have a very good echo uh, that, that allowed us to do that. Um, so that's quite all right. Our echoes were pretty wild. We had really highs, 
high echoes, game one, turn one, echo into a win, or really low echoes, and then yeah, not very much in between. But that's kind of how, uh, how the game works. Thank you all for coming and checking in to our latest The Epic Storm upgrade, version 14.0 with Massacre, our favorite angry demon. Look at that guy. Um, and we'll see where this takes us. Version 14.0 might last a long time. It might be a standard that we use in the following months as our format evolves, or it might be a really quick flash in the pan as we move on to something else. Only time will tell, and if you're a YouTube member or a Patreon member, then you get access to all of that information first. Whether it's with the website and the sideboard guide that gives it uh, that our Patreon gets, or access to a lot of videos that Bryant might release, or our streams that I will do, um, and uh, that will be YouTube membership. Either way, if you're liking this content, make sure to like this video and then chat or leave a comment about what you think uh, is something that I could improve on or what your favorite thing that I do is in my content creation. I really do read everything and I appreciate all of the thoughts that you guys have. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, an end screen really quick and I'm gonna wish you all a good night. I'll see you guys around. Nope, oh, that's the wrong one. Look at me go. One screen. Hopefully this will be fixed by, by next week. Have a good night. <laughs>